The following program is rated U for universal audiences and is considered suitable for listeners of all ages. This is a production from Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. Hello, and welcome once again to Poet's Passion. I'm your host, Cookie Coletti. In case you're listening in for the first time, this is a show about poetry and the poets who write it. If you have a love of poetry, as we do, then this is the show for you. This week, we'll be hearing poems by Jonathan Patrick Russell and Martin Fennell. We'll also be spotlighting Jeff Niles and some of his amazing poetic works. But kicking things off this time, we have an introspective poem written by Jonathan Patrick Russell, which will be read by Shane Harris. It's called, What If? Is what I do enough? Is what I am all right? Is there something more I should do? Is it not enough to fight? Am I too weak to continue? If I move on, will I fall? Does anyone still believe in me? Will I ever stand tall? What if I can't go forward? What if I totally fail? What if I'm simply not good enough? What if my train should derail? Would anyone stand near me? Would anyone even care? Who would simply be laughing? Who would actually be there? What if I just can't? What if I drop and simply cry? What if I can't get back up? What if I can no longer try? Where would I be then? Would you be there beside me? Or would you be the one laughing? Would anyone be there to watch and see? What if? What if? That is the question. What is the answer? What is the answer? As I mentioned before, this week we will be spotlighting Jeff Niles, who most of you may know as Zimtron from Robots of the Company, Sherlock Holmes in The Misadventures of Sherlock Holmes, and as the host of DRE's talk show, The Dark Building Lounge. We'll be hearing five poems from Jeff this week. And first up, here's Valina Cutler reading Jeff's poem titled, Now is Not the Time. Now is not the time to blame. Now's the time to heal. Now's the time to say what's on our mind, to say just how we feel. The time has come for straight talk, not the time for lies. Time to say it loud and clear. At least it's time to try. To say the truth out loud, to say it without fear. To say it now, whether it does bring a smile or a tear. The words of forming in my mouth are the words of truth. And my words are surely heartfelt, for my feelings are your proof. Next up is another of Jeff Niles' poems. This one is called Hard to Get. Hard to Get, written and performed by Jeff Niles. You're playing hard to get. That's all right with me. Cause two can play at that same game, so hard to get I'll be. Uh, See if you can catch me, I'll give you one more try. Uh, But if you fail to catch me, then (laughs) run away will I. Then it will be my turn to seek, and seek and seek I will. And I promise I will find you, seductively, a slink in for the kill. And then you'll be my captain. Hard to get no more. I promise that you'll never want to seek what's out beyond that door. For I'm your perfect match, the perfect one for you. Your heart I finally captured from your every loving clue.
We step away from Jeff's work for a bit to hear Steve Anderson reading a poem by Martin Fennell titled Pulling a Fast One. Covers pulled above his head, clinging to the comfy bed, thinking of that sunlit beach and the taste of some sweet peach lying beneath the sparkling sun. Goodbye to all that summer fun when school days seemed so far away. Oh, just to have another day of carousels and pony rides, bumper cars and winding slides. Now back to school once again, back to paper, desk, and pen. Down below his mother called as his baby sister bawled. Within his heart a tiny rage, jealous of her preschool stage. Johnny, get up or you'll be late. Breakfast's ready, it's half past eight. Turning in to the wall, pretending not to hear at all. Now her footsteps on the stair, as he said a silent prayer. Now he heard the doorknob turn, back to school you have to learn. Then her footsteps on the floor, me tummy's feeling awfully sore, I'll be better by tomorrow, ma'am. Though she knew it was a sham, she smiled at him and quietly said, If you're sick, then stay in bed. We'll be right back after this. My name is Putch McNuttich, and I'm captain of the Titan One. For those who may not be familiar with us, the robots of the company, we are a group of service robots who were serving on board a deep space cargo vessel, the aforementioned Titan One. The human crew had been killed some years back, and then we crashed onto an enchanted planet named Bob. Yes, Bob. All that is a long story, which I won't go into here. You can download the log tapes if you want to be properly filled in, so there's no need for me to sit here for hours and days on end explaining all of our previous adventures. He's lost it, I tell you. Captain Punch has finally flipped his lid. I, I mean, placing an armed guard on a garbage can? Armed guard? <laughs> It's only P2 with a broomstick, and when anyone approaches, he simply says, shoot. Well, that may be so, but it still proves my point. The captain has lost his marbles. Again. I can't believe you guys could even consider a mutiny against the captain. <gasps> oh, no. Not a mutiny. I didn't sign up for that. Oh, how about you, Zipper? Hey, hey, hey. Rock on, ma'am. Robots of the Companies, fifth season premiere, coming in June from Dream Realm Enterprises, found exclusively on drego.net. Welcome back. I'd like to take this moment to read a poem by our featured poet, Jeff Niles, which is a very thought-provoking piece called Let the Healing Time Begin. Last year's world was full of hatred. Last year's world was full of strife. That year saw a lifetime's worth of the greatest loss of life. The year has passed us quickly. The year has passed so fast. The year has told us lots of things about what happened in the past. The outpouring of love I've seen through the passing year brings to me a sense of joy and to my eyes a tear. For although I felt a lot of love, I know there's problems still, but if we all learn to love together, there will be no more need to kill. So let us lift our hearts up, let the love shine in, let's fill the world with hope, and let the healing time begin. We're lucky to have Jeff Niles with us again this week to discuss his wonderful poetry. Welcome back to Poet's Passion, Jeff. Well, thank you, Cookie. Happy to be back here again on Poet's Passion. And thank you for featuring my poetry this episode. Much appreciated. Are you a big fan of reading poetry, Jeff, or do you just enjoy the writing experience? Hmm. 
I think, well, I think that's an easy question to answer. I, I enjoy both. Though writing is sometimes more difficult for me because most of the time I'll get an idea for a poem and the words will just flow out of me and I'll write the poem very quickly. Sometimes, however, I'll, I'll come up with a poem with uh, the beginning of the poem and I'll not finish it until a week, sometimes months, or rarely even a year after I've started it. Now, reading poetry. Reading poetry is much easier for me because I view it as an acting project or as storytelling. I like to interpret what the poet meant when he wrote the poem. Take, for example, a poem that I learned when I was 15 years old, Lewis Carroll's Jabberwocky. It's a nonsense poem. Many of the words have no real meaning because Carroll just invented them. My challenge when reading that poem was to uh, make the audience understand what I think the poem is about. In other words, make them see the story in the nonsense. Show them the adventure within the poem that I see whenever I read it. And that's actually why I enjoy, I guess, uh, reading poetry more than writing it. Do you prefer short-form poems or long ones? Well... I like the short-form poems uh, better, I only, because uh, I have written more of them. I've only written, really, uh, two epic-type poems, or long-form poems, as you call them, and they have been both fun to write. And while my poem, The Power of Words, sort of flowed effortlessly out of me, uh, the other poem, uh, Welcome Home, took me literally weeks to write, because, well, first, it was my first effort at writing a long-form epic poem, and uh, well, second, the subject matter was amazing to me, and I wanted to get the story of my adventure right. I told a story with that poem. I, I, I really did. I told a story. It was my story of a life-changing adventure that I took. I had to give the readers and uh, listeners, in this case, a sense of that journey, a feeling that they were there, too. Now, anybody who has read this poem from the Society of Creative Anachronism, or the SEA, uh, has said that it's a pretty accurate depiction of what happens at their annual event called Penzik. Now, what I hope is that the listeners here will get that same feeling, well, even if they've never been to Penzik. Last time you mentioned getting poetry from your mother. Do you still have or remember any of her poetry? And what was it about your mother's poetry that inspires you as a poet today? <laughs> oh, my mother's poetry. Uh, gosh, she wrote, she wrote basically like little poems, you know, little short poems. Um, they were mostly like the kind of poems that, uh, well, that you see on greeting cards and such like that. And uh, sometimes she would... Uh, she would write poetry that, uh, well, she used to sing at weddings. And uh, sometimes she would write a poetry if she knew the bride and groom. And uh, it was sort of like a toast to the bride and groom. And I don't know, I don't have any of her actual poems with me anymore. Uh, my sister got those. She used to write them and uh, write them in this little notebook that she always kept. And once in a while, well... Even in the middle of the night, she would wake up and start writing a poem if she had an idea. And actually, that's what I do sometimes. I'll wake up in the middle of the night and remember what my mother you know, used to do with her poems. And I'll go to my computer. In her case, it was her notebook. But I'll go to my computer and I'll start writing you know, the uh, first lines of the uh, poem. And sometimes it'll take me a while to finish it, and sometimes I'll finish it right then and there. Let's see, an example maybe of something that my mother would have written. Uh, well, here's a toast that she might have written. A toast to the bride and the groom. May their love be forever in bloom. May it last through the years, through the joy and the tears. May love in their hearts always find room. And that's pretty much the kind of poetry that she would have written. In your poem, Let the Healing Time Begin, you invoke some powerful imagery. Can you tell us exactly what the poem is about and what inspired it? 
Well, that poem was written almost exactly one year after 9-11 happened. And I, uh, well, I wrote that uh, because actually, number one, I, uh, there was a contest on poetry.com and they wanted people to write their feelings about 9-11 a year after. And that's what I did. And at the time, you know, I, I thought that the country was healing. And, you know, friendships that I made, even with some people that were my political enemies at the time, I, uh, I found common ground because of 9-11. We all seem to, you know, be getting along better. And uh, the country seemed to be healing at that time. And that's what I found in this poetry. I found that common ground. I found the healing. Thank you for joining us again here on Poets Passion, Jeff. And thank you for sharing your wonderful poetry. Thank you, Cookie. It was a pleasure being here. And now here's Sally Wiggett reading Jeff's poem titled Tender Loving Tug. Need you by my side, need you in my arms, need to hold and kiss you, love, keep you free from harm. Need to kiss your tender lips, need to hold you near, need to love you always, want to make it clear. Need you always by my side to hold and kiss and hug, heartstrings attached to yours forever in a tender loving tug. Jeff will now be heard reading one of his long form poems, which is titled A Welcome Home. I lay there in my tent, awaiting certain doom. I saw the lightning flash, I heard the thunder boom. It was mere months ago when first I'd heard Scar's call. Now shivered I, all dressed in garb, stood of the mundanity of it all. As I lay there in the dark with my new nervous tick, my mind recalled the week just past of my very first Penzik. Reflecting on it all, thinking of my week, I had found most everything that I had hoped to seek. When I first arrived, I was true amazed. Much joy felt I from shop sight sounds of the town of tents on which I gazed. The gentles that I saw there had left their mundane lives in mass just to be at Penzik, where they were living in the past. As my week progressed, the more fun it became. I knew as I was more drawn in, I'd never be the same. The food and drink were great. I enjoyed all that I did try. But it was the French fried potatoes that made my taste buds really fly. As I browsed the shops, my lady stepped away. I lost her for a while when she lost her way. Her veils were lost, had slipped away on one rainy Penzig night. A new one soon replaced them one of length and colors bright. I bought a pair of moccasins, medieval ones at that, and from my new friend Thern I bought a fancy feathered hat. Wogamut delighted when on the stage they stood, they truly lived up to their name to be in a good mood. Milady and I wore to witness Turku do their thing, when asked was I to give our seats to the queen and king. The king was grateful by this humble gesture and announced out loud that he would grant myself a favor, and he pronounced it to the crowd. The music was fantastic, the belly dancing too. The lady joined in with tambourine, invited to play with Turku. The battles, dance, the revelry, music, poetry, and song, the people that I met there made me feel that I belong. I joined in with many parties, with their fires cheery bright. The drums did beat, the dancers danced in the rhythm of the night. With the known world players I had the smallest part, but it was great to walk the boards again in a brand new start. The plays I saw of Commedia on the performance stages. The bards I joined when I was told a bard's work deserves a bard's wages. 
In the Bartic circles, my old friend Kyrian did his thing. He told his funny stories and his body songs did sing. I met some newfound friends, John Michael Zolp to come to mind, as well as many others in my new Bartic home did I find. Next year I will be back again, in Bartic circles and on the stage, telling stories, poems, and song. Out of my soul they'll burst out off the page. My Pensick was life-altering. I loved all that it's about. But as for my first camping trip, well, the jury is still out. The pageantry I did enjoy. It was a lot of fun. But at that moment I did wish that I could see the sun. For it did rain for two days straight. There was mud everywhere. Why, when I looked, I did find I'd muddy underwear. Nadine, my lovely travel aide, enjoyed every Penzik moment spent. She loved her second Penzik and had not a drop of rainfall in her tent. My wise and seasoned friend liked not the mud in which he stepped, and so he rolled up his fine tent, and in the van he slept. I wish that I had joined him, but in my tent I went to the windy, rain-soaked, scary night of terror that I spent. My last night I was scared. I thought I would not last, and so I wrote this poem about the recent past. My lady slept, but I did not, not e'en a single wink, as I prayed and hoped to my fair tent would not in a mud hole sink. My clothes were soaked, the tent was too, t'was water in my shoe. I had the shakes and shivers, when e'er the storm winds blew. My teeth did chatter, my knees did shake, I could see my breath. I hoped my last night at Penzik would not end in my death. But as the morning came, the sun arose and shone unearthly bright. I knew that I had been reborn, and everything was right. For I survived the storm-filled night, I overcame my fear, and I just knew I would be back once again next year. We close this week's show with another reading by Jeff Niles, though this time out he'll be reading a whimsical poem by our own Jonathan Patrick Russell titled, Where Are My Pants? We hope you enjoy this very tongue-in-cheek outing from John and Jeff. Where are my pants? I can't find my pants. I, I know I had them before. Did they walk right out the door? I can't believe such a calamity. What a real tragedy. Where or where did my pants go? Does anyone out there know? Could they have a mind of their own? Could they really decide simply to roam? It isn't like them to leave my side. Usually it's on my rump that they reside. Were they stolen while I slept? Or was it while I uncontrollably wept? Oh, wait... I wept after they disappeared. Boo-hoo! When will they reappear? Where, oh, where are my pants? Were they dragged off by the ants? Were they taken by a passing bird? Or could that be completely absurd? I can't do much without them. I look silly walking around without them. Though someone might get a thrill, so would it really be a big deal? No, I can't go around without them. I have to actually wear them. I can't just cover up with a plant. I honestly need those pants. Where, oh, where are they? I desperately need them today. I can't go around naked. Just can't. Where, oh, where are my pants? That's all we have time for this week. We hope you join us next time for Episode 3 
Until then, I am your host, Cookie Coletti, wishing the very best for you and those you love. You've been listening to Poets Passion, hosted by Cookie Coletti. We'd like to thank our poetry readers this week, who will be listed in order of appearance. Shane Harris, Valina Cutler, Jeff Niles, Steve Anderson, and Sally Wiggett. This episode of Poets Passion featured poems by Jonathan Patrick Russell, Martin Fennell, and Jeff Niles. The poetry heard in this program remains the intellectual property of the authors who retain all rights to their material. This show was edited, written, produced, and directed by Jonathan Patrick Russell. The series Poet's Passion was created by Jonathan Patrick Russell, and the copyright is held by Dream Realm Enterprises. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this program without the express written permission of Dream Realm Enterprises is strictly prohibited. For more information about this or any of our shows, please email us at darkbuilding1 at yahoo.com. On behalf of Dream Realm Enterprises, this is Cookie Coletti. Join us again soon for more wonderful poetry. The theme tune for Poet's Passion was produced and performed by Kevin McLeod, who also provided additional music for this program. All rights for the music used in this program are retained by the original artist. Join us for more amazing audio material found exclusively at dreamrealmsite.com. This program is copyright 2020 and is brought to you by Dream Realm Enterprises, soaring into new realms.